Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. Today we're gonna to talk about the launch of the new second generation Intel Xeon scalable SKUs that some are calling the refresh SKUs. This is much more than a refresh. It's actually kind of like bringing back the old Intel Xeon E5 2600 series and contrasting that with the old Xeon E7 series that we had for years and generations. We have a much more detailed article behind this video that you can see on the STH main site. We're gonna link that video in the description. Now in the new launch today, what we have is a set of new SKUs. Now there are two Xeon Gold SKUs that are low core count, high frequency, high caches, and so they're really optimized for per core licensing. We're not gonna talk about those in this video other than to say that they're out there. There are three other SKUs that are really easy to talk about. The first one is the Intel Xeon Silver 4210T, which is an extended temperature part, which you know is pretty important for some markets. It has higher TDP, some higher clock speed. So there's a bump in this part, but it's also different from the 4210 that we saw before and the new 4210R. The second CPU we wanna talk about is the Intel Xeon Gold 6208U, and this is a 16 core part that's under $1,000. It may actually be interesting to some of those in the workstation market, especially if you wanted a single socket solution that also supports Intel Optane DC persistent memory. We have more on that on in the main site article. The last SKU that we wanna talk about is the brand new Intel Xeon Bronze 3206R. Now the 3206R is really pretty much the same thing as we saw with the previous generation 3106, which is an eight core part. It doesn't have hyper threading. So it's only, you know, eight core, eight thread. It's basically a very low clock speed part. So this one is 1.9 gigahertz. The old one was 1.7 gigahertz. It's the same as we saw with the Xeon Bronze 3104 to 3204, except that this is coming almost a year after the initial implementation of the second generation Xeon Scalable series. Intel just said, hey, at launch, Launch. We didn't need this part, and now they say they do. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what Intel did for the R series SKUs, and that's really the meat of this launch. First, the Intel Xeon Silver 4200 R series, Intel did a couple interesting things. First, they generally raised clock speeds, even though they didn't necessarily increase core counts, and that's gonna give more performance per core. But the other thing that Intel did, which is really interesting, is that they raised the TDP. Instead of seeing you know, 85 to say 100 watt TDPs, we're now seeing 100 watt to 100 and 30 watt TDPs, which allows the processors to hit higher clock speeds over more cores without hitting throttling. It's also a big deal for things like system design because you have higher TDP. You're probably, most users are gonna still want the newer parts with the higher TDP because they're gonna be more performant at the same price, but that's something to take into consideration. The Intel Xeon Gold series is where the big changes happen. Now in the Gold 5200R series, there are two new SKUs. The first one is a 5218R, which basically brings the Xeon Gold 6230 performance down to the you know kind of lower end 5200 series stack, but it also brings a giant over 40% price discount for that level of performance. That's pretty awesome. The other new SKU is the Intel Xeon Gold 5220R, and that brings the previous Intel Xeon Gold 6252 performance down to a level that's you know much less expensive. It's over a 50% decrease in price, which is pretty awesome just to kind of see 11 months later, you can get way more performance at a lower cost. But then we're gonna get to the Intel Xeon Gold 6200R series where most of the action happened. Now the Intel Xeon Gold 6200R series has a number of SKUs and we go into great detail about those on the main site article. We're gonna just highlight two really quickly. The first is the Intel Xeon Gold 6248R, which basically brings the Intel Xeon Platinum 8268 levels of performance down to a much lower price point. Now this is a 24 core part and it's actually very performant. And we're gonna talk a little bit about why in our benchmark se section that we're gonna to get to in a little bit. The other big change is the Xeon Gold 6258R. Now what this is, is a sub $4,000 version of the Intel Xeon Platinum 8280, except with one major difference. The 6258R is only a dual socket capable part. So you can run it in one socket server, two socket server, but you can't run it in four socket and eight socket servers. That's a big deal. And that's kind of how we saw some of the skew differentiation in the old Xeon E5 and E7 generations. You know, we saw that kind of differentiation based on pricing more for SKUs that went to you know higher socket count servers. That's what we're seeing today. And it's a big deal because it brings that high level 28 core performance part down to a discount. I mean, it's basically a 60% discount or more on that part, which is 
pretty phenomenal for the industry. We're going to talk about what that means a little bit later in this video. And we went into great detail again on the main side article. The key point here is that with the Xeon Gold 5200R and 6200R, Intel basically gave everyone more performance for the two socket market. And the two socket market is the mainstream market. And the level of performance increase that we're seeing or performance per dollar, which is probably the more exciting one, is somewhere in the, you know, say 40 to 70% range, which is a huge, huge increase in performance. It's more than we've seen, you know, through most of the generations in a performance per dollar basis. I mean, this is one of the biggest launches actually that Intel has had in a long time, but they're kind of playing it down. And part of this is the fact that they're moving away from something that they went to in 2017, which is unifying a SKU stack and really saying, okay, well, we're gonna have a one range of processors instead of having this Xeon E5 for really two socket servers and having an E7 for kind of the higher end servers. There was an E5 that did four socket, but we're gonna, you know, forget about that conveniently for a second. Anyway, effectively what Intel has done is they bifurcated the line just like they used to have. And realistically, this is a big win for consumers or people purchasing servers because you're gonna get a lot more performance per dollar if you use these new R parts. So let's talk a little bit about benchmarks and show why that's the case and what it means on a competitive basis. Okay, so we took the Intel Xeon Gold 6248R, we took the old 6248 or the existing 6248, we took the Intel Xeon Platinum 8268, and we also took the AMD Epic 7402 or 7402P, they basically perform the same, so we just kind of use the P part, but we put it in single socket configuration just to make it really easy for everyone. And we ran some performance benchmarks. Now, when we did the original AMD Epic 7402 piece, we saw that it basically had the same performance as the Platinum 8268. So when Intel actually created this new Xeon Gold 6248R piece, and they said, hey, you know, we're gonna give a little clock speed bump and we're gonna release this new part, we kind of figured it'd be about the same ballpark performance. And what you're gonna see is those three parts actually do have about the same level of performance with the old Gold 6248 kind of falling way behind. And performance is great, but what we really kind of wanna know is performance per dollar because that's a kind of more useful metric. So when we normalize all of that performance down to the Intel Xeon Gold 6248, the existing part, and you're gonna see what really happened. And AMD is showing a two to say two and a half X, the performance per dollar of the Intel part in that price or in the, at this range. And what you're gonna notice about that is that's really what AMD has been preying on and Intel's had to discount to be able to combat. Now, what happens when we normalize that performance to the new Gold 6248R, we see that, in, that AMD actually still has a pretty compelling value proposition. However, the lead isn't way more anymore. I mean, we're talking, you know, something that's a lot more reasonable. And by that, I mean somewhere in the 1.4 to 1.75 X range. Now you could still say that, okay, AMD's way ahead, but I think that's not really taking into account the full picture because a server is not just the CPU. There's the entire server and that server has components. Now, Intel has a broad silicon business. They have NICs, they have Optane DCPMM, they have storage, they have SSDs, they have accelerators and FPGAs. And so throughout that portfolio, Intel is able to go to server OEMs, they're going to be able to go to big customers and going to be able to bundle all of that different silicon TAM and they're going to be able to say, okay, well, you know what? We can give you a deal on the entire package. And so really being somewhere between 40 to 75% higher than AMD really probably doesn't get them that worried because they know that they can actually make it up in terms of this bundling. Now we're gonna launch you know, a bigger set of numbers, especially in the benchmarks of the 6248 and some of the other SKUs over the next few days and few weeks. So you're gonna see that on the STH main site. We just kind of wanted to give you some sense of where Intel is going with their competitive footprint. But let's talk about competition for a minute because that's perhaps the more exciting part about this. So let's talk about you know, what this means just to the Intel Xeon scalable line. So first off, if you're buying a dual socket Intel Xeon server and you're not using a frequency optimized part, so you're really kind of seeing how many cores and how much you know gigahertz or how much clock speed you can get per dollar, then by all means, you should be looking at the new 6200 and 5200 R series, sometimes even the Xeon Silver R series. I mean, frankly, this is just the way to go. If you have a quote that's outstanding, you should get it requoted with these new parts because they're frankly much better than the old ones and a much better value. But Intel doesn't just have the Intel Xeon scalable line. I mean, it has the Intel Xeon W line, so the W3200 and W2200 lines. And this new launch is actually gonna impact them. So for example, that Intel Xeon Gold 6258R 
is a Platinum 8280 more or less. And that means it supports Intel Optane DC persistent memory. It also supports two socket operation. So when you compare that to something like the Xeon W 3275 that we reviewed, what you're going to notice is that the 3275, sure, it was a little bit faster, but you know, if you can go to dual sockets, if you can add DC PMM, and oh, by the way, that new Xeon Gold 6258R is actually at a lower price by like 10% or a little more than 10%. I mean, that's actually a pretty compelling value proposition. So I think Intel has to kind of look at, you know, the Xeon W series and, you know, that's going to go all the way through the stack because you have like, say the new Xeon Gold 6208U, which has 16 cores and DC PMM support single socket only, but it's still also sub $1,000. So I think Intel definitely needs to go and look at their SKU stack beyond just Intel Xeon scalable, because there are going to be other areas that are going to be impacted. At the lower end, you're going to see the Xeon Silver really kind of start to compete a little bit more with the Xeon E2200 series because you can get higher consolidation ratios with the Intel Xeon Silver. And so I think that's another area that Intel's really gonna have to look at. Otherwise, the Intel Xeon E series is really just gonna become high clock speed. Now for AMD, the road actually just got a lot tougher, right? With Intel being more competitive on a price per core basis or price per performance basis, now AMD has to deal more directly with the fact that Intel can bundle more silicon. And that has a big impact when it comes to server pricing because Intel can be very aggressive in terms of deal bundling and discounting. When you start looking at you know, the total cost of a server, you may have say a couple thousand dollars in CPUs, but you may have 10 plus thousand dollars or 20,000 plus dollars in storage. And you, know, you may have another couple thousand dollars in NICs. And so when you look at that kind of portfolio, it's actually something that Intel could take advantage of. Now, Intel doesn't really have a great answer to the 64 core AMD Epic series. You still have to go to the four socket parts to be able to really compete there, but this is the main part of the market. The bigger impact could be for ARM vendors because for any of the ARM vendors saying that, hey, they're like 60% better than Intel, that equation totally changes overnight. And the reason for that is that the they now have to compete with the Intel Xeon Gold 6258R, which took basically a 60% discount from the Platinum 8280 that everybody used. That's going to be the new benchmark CPU that everybody's going to have to deal with. Now, this launch of refresh CPUs is really like a new line that's being inserted between the 2019 Intel Xeon scalable launch or second generation Intel Xeon scalable launch, and then the hopefully in 2020 Intel Ice Lake Xeon generation. So this is but for a lot of vendors, you know, they would really consider this like its own distinct product line. However, it uses the same microarchitecture in a silicon world. So we say this is just a refresh and additions to the line. Again, check out the STH main site. We have a much more in-depth piece on the refresh. We're also going to be releasing more numbers and benchmarks and reviews over the next few days, few weeks on the new refresh use. We've been working with them for a while. So we want to kind of give you just a heads up that that's coming. And hey, while you're here, why don't you check out the STH main site? Why don't you subscribe to us on YouTube, check out some of the other, you know, features that we have on YouTube because we're uploading a lot more these days. And at the end of the day, hey, thanks for spending your time watching us and I hope you have an awesome day.